Hi and welcome back to Prep Bytes. So, uh, in this uh, session, we are going to go in and uh, connect our server to our database. Okay. So, in order to go in and do this, uh, the very first step is for us to go in and uh, get access to this database, right? So, we're going to be using MongoDB Atlas uh, so that we are able to go in and have our database in the internet already rather than going in and relying on any other third party apps for getting us this feature. So, uh, the very first thing you will be going in and doing is head on to mongodb.com. All right. So this is the website that you're supposed to go in and head on to. And uh, so what we want to do is that we kind of want to go in and access their database, uh, which has already been hosted out uh, in the cloud, right? So the first thing you're going to do is to just sign in. You're going to go in and click on sign in. You, uh, if you want, you can give in your email ID and then create a new account. Or much rather, you can just go in and utilize your Google or GitHub account in order to go in and sign in here. On signing in, it's going to go in like once you go in and you click on authenticate or proceed with your Google account, it might ask you a bunch of questions like, you know, what is your goal today and so much more. Um, I'm just going to go with, uh, we are trying to go in and learn MongoDB. What about application are we creating? Oh, it's a real time messaging application. So they'll try to go and give us suggestions as in search on uh, our selection over here. And what's your preferred language? We'll go with JavaScript. There we go. And with this, uh, we will be went in and taken down to this particular uh, page. So this is going to be your dashboard, which will help you to go in and manage all of your database uh, over here. Okay. So back a compliance policy, they'll say in a bunch of things here. Uh, we don't need this because we just doing this so as to learn up a bunch of things. I'm just going to close this. Okay. So now the very first thing we'll do is we'll go and build up a database. Uh, now you can see when I click on that, I'll get three, several, uh, three options over here. Uh, they do have really good paid servers that you can go in and host your, or put your database in. Uh, you have a good system with two GBs of RAM and so much more, but, uh, as we are, uh, kind of going to be building this just for practice and solely for practice. Uh, we can just go in for the shared storage option. Okay. So this is a pretty good option. It's free of charge and it's mainly for learning and exploring MongoDB altogether. But if you are uh, trying to create a production level app, a production grade app with is going to be a bunch of users, like, uh, you know, tens and thousands of users who are going to be using it. You are going to need all the juice that you can get. All right. So for our case, I'll say this would be all that's needed. You can select the region down to uh, whichever uh, server is available in the uh, in the Asian cost, I'll say. Okay, so we can change in the name as well. So let's just change this name as our live chat app. Okay, so, uh, you know, live chat app DB. Okay, we'll just give this name over here. And once you go in and in, give it a name here, you cannot change it anywhere else. All right, so I'm just going to go in and click on create. It'll ask you to go in and, uh, you know, uh, fill in the capture. It might take in a few tries, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do it. Now, once that is done, you are now going to be able to, uh, you know, uh, set in your username and password because in order to be able to access your database, you need this user ID and password over here. Okay. Now for the time being, as you can see, I've already have my password generated. You can click on this auto generate secure password. And one of the things I would suggest is to just go in and copy up this password somewhere. Okay. So right now there is no such a user that has been created. So I'm just going to go and create up a new user. You can order generate the password. If you want to give your own password, sure, but that's not an issue at all. Okay. But this password, we're going to be needing it later on. So I'll say you can just go and take a note of this. So I'm just going to go in and click on user. And as you can see, I created a user who will be able to go in and manipulate this database. So we're going to be needing this later up ahead. So please do keep that in mind. Okay. Now the next thing is uh, where would you like to connect from? So all of this is in the quick start panel. So if, if it doesn't show up, you can directly head on to the quick start panel or you can go in and address these one at a time from these panels over here under security. So I'm going to say, okay, uh, where would you like to connect from? So as you can see, uh, you know, you can go in and uh, so right now we are going to be working on a local environment. So we leave it as uh, my local environment over here. And now comes a part where, you know, we want to go in and give access uh, to this particular database of ours, right? So uh, by default, your IP is going to be registered by default 
but if you want one of the things i would suggest is to just go in so now you can kind of see that yeah it's it's saying this is my ip address you can give it in discussion uh, a description as well but much rather than that you can go in and create a new entry over here let's go to network access and over here just let's give it a second we can go on to edit okay so if you click on edit so what you're going to do is you're going to head on to network access click on edit and over here you will get an option called allow access from anywhere because uh, in some scenarios let's say for some odd reason your ip goes in and changes so you'll have to reconfigure this and as we're doing it from a pure learning perspective i'll say uh, for the time being we can just set it to allow access from anywhere okay so i'm going to click on confirm and this should basically uh, you know allow us to go in and access this database from almost any ip address that we want and also one of the thing is we have a credential so you we are going to be the only people who will be able to go in and uh, play with this database of ours all right so uh, in terms of database access there isn't much that we want to do here now let me just go in and head back so if i head back to database you can see that our database is live where you can see live chat app db and you're going to now go in and click on this connect button okay so uh, it'll go in and show you okay set up connection security and so much more what we want is we want to go in and connect this uh, database of ours to our server right so you have this option called as drivers connect to your application so we have drivers over here and that's it so you need not go in and change anything much over here so as you can see it's the latest version of node.js the uh, support which is 4.1 or later and in order to go in and install the drivers all we have to do is just copy this particular command they're already providing it to us so i'm going to just copy this head back into my vs code all right and we will install this okay so i'm going to say npm install mongodb and this should go in and install whatever uh, additional libraries we are going to require okay i'm going to head back to my browser and this is the important part okay so in order to go in and bring in the connection we are gonna go in and need a connection string so we exactly need to specify okay which database are you trying to go in and connect to so that's where this particular uh you know uh, connection string comes into the picture and i'd say that here the, they're already going in and specifying us that you should replace the password with whatever we have set during the initial stages so i'm just going to copy this one over here and take it on to my dot env file because i am going to go in and just create up a new uh, uh you know variable over here let's call this as mongo uri okay so this is going to be our connection string i'm just going to go in and copy up the connection string and paste it out over here okay so it should look somewhat similar to this in your case as well now what we want to do is we want to go in and replace the password okay so i have this password over here uh, which is something that you would have set when you initially went in and configured your mongodb atlas okay so i'm just going to quickly go in and uh, fetch my uh, access code over here let me just go in and quickly do the same so i'm going to put in my password over here okay let's just go in and put in the password so what i generated the password so it would be fairly easy for us to go in and get access to this so now the good thing here is we can just go in and get access to this variable from our process.env so let's just let's just go in and check the same okay so what i'm going to do over here in the same way that we got it in uh, from here uh, right beneath the uh, the when we are going in and using this dot env and the uh, when we are invoking this config function right after just make sure you're putting it after not before so that you can go and get access to these variables so i'm going to go in and say const uh, mongo uri um and i'm going to say const mongo uri i'm just going in and okay i'll just directly console log it out so i'm going to say uh, process process dot e n v dot okay and then we'll put in the name of our uh, environment variable here so which is u r i so let me just hope that i'm not messing up the name here and i'm gonna go in and paste it back in my index dot js okay there you go and that's it so once this is done we can just see whether the connection string is accessible here so it need not be done but 
But there you go. I'm gonna do npm start and a node mon should go in and pop up. And as you can see, yeah, so we are getting in and I think node mon, we might have to go in and change the scripts. Okay, so we do have node mon already installed, but apparently I hadn't changed the scripts so that uh, we can take advantage of node mon here. Right, so we have a server running, and as you can see, it does log in the connection URI. I'll be changing my password later up ahead, so that you know, because the thing here is the reason I have went in and put this URI inside of my .env file is because we don't want to make that public either. In this particular video, though, you are able to see it, but uh, we'll be changing up the password so that no one can go in and piggyback from our connection string. Okay, all right. So once this is done. Uh, we do have access to this, uh, so that's not a problem at all. Let's just see whether our node mon is able to go in. And yeah, there you go. So node mon uh, is also able to go in and work as well. So now all I need to do is just run npm start. And this particular uh, command is going to be automatically, uh, you know, put into my uh, terminal. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to go in and start up the connection. Okay, so we have, we did, we do have access to this connection string. So the next process is to go in and get it connected to our server. So how exactly do we do this? So uh, in order to go in and achieve or do the connection process or do operations with that of our database, we already have went in and installed this, uh, you know, a library called as Mongoose. So uh, what we'll be doing here is we're going to go in and utilize this connect function. All right. And uh, the thing about this connect function is that it goes in and returns you back a promise. So for example, if I just go in and say process dot env dot mongo uri, this is going to go in and bring in my connection. Okay. So uh, that, that is something it will do. It will go in and, uh, you know, uh, make a connection onto my database. But this operation is an asynchronous operation. And you'd be able to notice this when I go in and save this up and run it within my, uh, yeah, let's just go in and run it within our terminal here. So we are getting already in use. The port apparently seems is already in use. Okay. Sure, then let's just go in and change it up. Okay, so if that, that is the case, uh, we'll just go for 8080, all right? And then we're gonna do a quick save, come back out over here, and let's just run npm start again. All right, there you go. And as you can see, yeah, so our server is running back again. And as you can see, it, it, it we are getting a promise over here. So the promise is basically given back by your connect function. And what this does is it basically goes in and opens the default connection to your database, to your MongoDB. Okay. So now it's giving me back a promise. So obviously we have to go in and take care of this. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to go in and create up a function. Okay. Uh, let's call this function up as, or much rather, let's just keep all of this together. So we'll keep our routes in here. All right. So this is going to be for the connectivity purposes. So I'm going to create a function. Okay. Uh, let's call it as uh, connect db, all right. And um, what we'll do here is we'll have to go in and make this into an async function. So let's say async, and now we can go in and perform our asynchronous operation over here. And I'll say const. Let's just give it a name. We'll call it as connect is equal to uh, this connection. Okay. So we are gonna go in and make this connection here inside and as it's returning as a promise here we go and that's done okay so this is it this is how easy it is to go in and get your database uh connected onto your server okay now uh how do we know that it actually went in and uh happened right because yeah i went in and i've uh, it's, you know i've went in and i performed this operation for connecting it but the problem is what if it doesn't connect right and uh, all such together so for now, I'm just going to say, uh, you know, server is connected to DB. Okay. So I'm going to just log this and let's just make sure to call this function because even though we connect, we, we've, uh, yeah, we've went in and we've created this function. It's not going to run until we call it. So there you go. Uh, we could go in and keep, you know, make it in a separate file. I'll say, uh, makes, keeps things way cleaner. 
but okay for the time being as we are just trying this out we can go in and change the structure later up ahead okay so let's see whether this goes in and works so as you can see when i go in and open up my server it's saying that server is connected to db so yeah the connection is uh working as it should all right so if i go in and save it again as you can see it just automatically goes in apparently yeah it is i think it's mainly because of the multiple calls that i made to it okay as you can see yeah, it does go in and throw in errors as uh, you know and the server just goes in and crashes so what you can do is uh we'll need to go in and take care of this problem where what if the server doesn't go in and connect like it doesn't go in and connect to a database so what we'll do is we'll just drop all of this inside of a try catch block so as to go in and take care of the scenario and i'll say error and now we are going to go in and put this or we're just going to quarantine it in the try block so that in case uh there is some error okay that happens uh in terms of the connectivity we are able to go in and handle the same here okay so i'm going to say console.log um server is, server is not connected okay <clears throat> not connected to uh data base all right and let's just go in and give in our object here as well now okay we will just say dot message so we have this property apparently within this error object which is called as message so if it's not we we'll, okay i'll just as per as i recall it does okay so as you can see now when i go in and you know save this the server goes in and runs and connects to our database and this is the sole purpose that we wanted to do in this particular session so what we have is we have a database uh, up in the cloud all right and as you can see in terms of connections as well you know it has increased altogether so because we are going and connecting to the server uh, we are going to be able to go in and see all of our data later up ahead uh, we'll be pushing uh, some data onto our database so for the timing though i'll say this is a, this is one of the process uh, procedures that you have to go in and uh, do regardless because uh, what we are going to be doing in right after this is uh, trying to go in we'll be going in and performing the authentication and authorization operations for our login and sign up pages okay so that would be all for this particular video people uh, see you in the next one